morning and welcome to Breathe Kids. Shout if you are ready to have an awesome morning. Amazing. If you're new this morning, my name is Lucy and I am very, very glad that you have joined us. Last week, we set you a challenge. Let's take a look at how you got on. Very, very similar. Yeah. I did um, a flower. What did you do, Rose? I did a flower. Oh, okay. Very similar. Yeah. To start off our morning, I'm going to hand over to Grace and Liv, who are going to see how many t shirts they can fit on themselves within two minutes. Today's challenge is to see who can get all their tops on first. Three, two, one, go. If you don't have someone to compete with, see how many tops you can get on in one minute. Now it's your turn and don't forget to send in your videos. Bye! Bye. Who thinks they can do this challenge like Grace and Liv? If you think you can, get your grown-ups to send in a video of you doing this challenge to the Breathe Kids Church Dropbox and we can have a look at how you get on on this video next week. We're now going to go into a time of praise and worship. So get your dancing feet ready and your singing voices ready. Let's go and praise Jesus together.
love praising Jesus with you. So last week we started looking into the story of David and we looked at the story of David and Goliath. I loved that story. So today we're going to have a look at the story of David and Jonathan and their friendship. So let's have a look at this cartoon together to find out more. Slapstick Theater, David and Jonathan. This is Jonathan. Hey! who was the son of King Saul and a warrior in Israel's army. This is David, hey. who would later become the king of Israel. Huh? After David defeated a great giant, he was brought before King Saul and he met Jonathan. They immediately became friends. Yeah! And Jonathan made a pact with David and showed him that by giving David his robe and weapons. Oh, hang on. From that time on, David was successful in all he did. Arr! And King Saul became jealous of David and very angry. Arr. Saul wanted his servants and Jonathan to get rid of David, but because Jonathan loved his friend David, he warned David of what his father was planning. Arr. Jonathan went to his father, King Saul, and talked him out of harming David. Mm. Okay. For a time, David was safe from King Saul's plans. Phew. But not long after, the king's jealousy and anger came back, and he tried to kill David. Whoa! David got away, and his friend Jonathan came to help him. I got it. Jonathan tried again to talk his father out of hurting David. No. But now King Saul was convinced he needed David to be gone. Jonathan was angry and sad that his father would not let his friend go. <sighs> and he knew that David would have to go into hiding and run from King Saul. Jonathan met David one last time, and the two cried and said their goodbyes. <laughs> Jonathan told David to go in peace and that they had a special bond in God's name. Then David left and lived a life on the run from King Saul, and Jonathan returned to the town. Even though they were separated, the two were the best of friends and were an encouragement to one another. Yeah! Now is the time for you to go and get your pens, your notebooks, and your Bibles ready to take notes. And you have got 10 seconds. Go! If you have your Bibles with you, turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 18 verses 1 to 4 and we can read it together. It says this. When David finished talking with Saul, Jonathan felt very close to David. He loved David as much as he loved himself. Saul kept David with him from that day on. He did not let David go home to his father's house. 
Jonathan made an agreement with David. He did this because he loved David as much as himself. He took off his coat and gave it to David. He also gave David his uniform, including his sword, bow and belt. I love the relationship between David and Jonathan. They were best friends. So much so that Jonathan loved David as he loved himself and gave him his uniform. Now we're going to read a little bit more and find out how valuable their friendship was. So turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 19 verses 1 to 7 and we can read it together. It says this. Saul told his son Jonathan and all his servants to kill David, but Jonathan cared very much for David. So he warned David, My father Saul is looking for a chance to kill you. Watch out in the morning, hide in a secret place. I will go out and stand with my father in the field where you are hiding. I'll talk to him about you, then I'll let you know what I find out. Jonathan talked to Saul, his father. He said good things about David. Jonathan said, You are the king. Don't you... Don't do wrong to your servant David. He did nothing wrong to you. What he did was help you greatly. David risked his life when he killed Goliath the Philistine. The Lord won a great victory for all Israel. You saw it and you were happy. Why would you do wrong against David? He's innocent. There's no reason to kill him. Saul listened to Jonathan. Then he made this promise. As surely as the Lord lives, David won't be put to death. So Jonathan called to David. He told David everything that had been said and he brought David to Saul. So David was with Saul as before. Can you imagine your best friend's dad trying to get rid of you? That would be so scary. Thankfully, Jonathan told David what his father was trying to do. This meant that David could get away and hide. We also see that Jonathan told his dad not to do what he was planning to do. And thankfully, Saul changed his mind. Jonathan spoke very highly of David. He was a truly good friend. I feel challenged to, do, to be more like Jonathan. He cared so much about David that he went out of his way to save him from his father. Later on in the story, we find out that Saul tried to harm David again, but Jonathan warned him. David had to leave this time, so they had to say goodbye. They were both very, very sad that they had to be apart because they were best friends. It's so important for us to have good friends who care about us and who are going to grow with you in Christ. Friends who support and encourage you, who have got your back through every season of life. I think not only should we have these friends in our lives, but we should also try and be one of these friends to others. Jesus is a friend like Jonathan. He is so kind and caring. He goes before us and always has our backs. He goes out of the way for us daily. He loves us so much that he gave his life so that we could have a relationship with God. If you haven't accepted Jesus into your hearts yet, but would like to, we would love to pray this prayer with you together. Dear Lord God, thank you for sending your son Jesus just for me. Jesus, today I give you control of my life. I believe you lived, you died and you rose again just for me. Today I make you my Lord and Saviour. Change me, renew me, transform me. I am yours. In Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. Wow, isn't God good? If you just said that prayer for the first time, there is a party going on in heaven right now. How exciting is that? This was an awesome story. I loved learning about it. What an awesome friend Jonathan was to David. Next week, we're going to learn even more about David and I am looking forward to it. Thank you so much for sending in your memory verse videos. So let's take a look at how you got on with the memory verse from last week. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Instead, set an example to the believers in love, conduct, speech, faith, purity and love. 1 Timothy 4.12 Let anyone look down on you because you are young, but instead set an example for believers in speech, conduct, love, faith and purity. 1 Timothy 4.12 Hi everyone, just wanted to share this week's memory verse with you. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example of the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith 
and impurity. 1 Timothy 4.12 Hi Tate, I'm doing the memory verse, 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 12. Don't let no one despise you just because you are young. And for believers, show them an example in your speech, your courage, your love, your faith and purity. Bye church! Hi church, I'm doing the memory verse. 1 Timothy 4.12 of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, the way you live, your love, your faith, and your purity. Amen. Amen. Bye! Robert Matt. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 12. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example to the believers in speech, in conduct, in faith, in love, and in purity. Church, I'm doing the memory first. 1 Samuel 2 2. No one is holy like the Lord. There is no one beside you. There is no rock like that. God. Amen. Amen. Hello, church. I'm doing the memory first. There is no light like God. There, but there is no beside you. There is no rock like that God. 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 2. Amen. 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 My church. Hi, church. I'm doing the memory first. Samuel chapter 2 verse 2 There is none holy like the Lord For there is none beside you There is no rock like our God Amen Bye church Amen. Bye. This week you have got a brand new memory verse to learn at home Once you have learned it Get your grown ups to send in a video of you To the Breathe Kids Church Dropbox So that we can show it here Next week on the Breathe Kids Church video Are you up for the challenge? So our memory verse this week is from Proverbs 27 verse 17. It says this, As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Say it with me. Proverbs 27 verse 17. As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. You can write this down, underline it or highlight it in your Bibles so that you can remember the word of God. Let's take a look at how you got on with the craft from last week. Hey. I'm now going to hand over to Amy who has got an awesome craft for you to do either today or during the week with your families. Hi boys and girls, today we're going to make some crafts for the David and Jonathan story. Now in the David and Jonathan story we see that Jonathan was a really really good friend to David. So I thought today we'd think of some ways that we could be really good friends to our friends. And it's really hard at the moment to be a really good friend because we just can't see our friends like we normally would. But we can send them things or give them things. And I thought we'd make some friendship bracelets. So I've got three ways that you can make a friendship bracelet today. And the first one is ever so easy. All you need is a piece of paper that you chop down. Now it's got to be able to fit around your wrist um, because the person's going to have to wear it. And then all you can use is some pencil crayons, whatever you like. You can draw your design on here. I've chosen to go for rainbow, love a rainbow. And also I've written them a nice encouraging message. You are amazing. So I think every friend needs to know that. And then all you need to do, you can either ask them to glue it together once it's on their wrist or you can just use a paper clip. So you put it on your wrist and then you just paper clip it on and you've got a lovely friendship bracelet. Okay, so that's one way. The second way is using these pipe cleaners. Now you might not have pipe cleaners at home, but you can get them quite easily. Um, so you get a pipe cleaner like this and they're bendy already, so they can go around a wrist. And then you can add things like beads. I've got some beads. Um, for example, this one here has got beads on it and you can just push them on to make a lovely pattern but you can make your own beads you could also if you want to this is quite clever use a pencil to make your own bead and a wrap of paper 
and you just wrap it round your pencil like this, sellotape it shut and you've made your own bead, it's ever so easy and then you can thread that on to make a really pretty pattern, lots of different things you could do, even you could use some pasta and add that to a bracelet, lovely friendship bracelet that would be. And then the last way that we've got is this way using wool. So all you need is three or more coloured pieces of wool and I've gone for three different contrasting colours. So I've got a red, a blue and a purpley colour and you chop them to the same length like I've done here and then you tie them at the top and then you need to practice some plaiting. Now a good thing to do is either get someone else to hold that bit so you can pull down as you do your plait or you can just put it between your knees and plait from there and then once you've gotten to the end of your plait you fasten it again and that friendship bracelet is ready to be tied around someone's wrist to let them know that you value them as a friend. So three different ways, a paper one, you've got a lovely pipe cleaner and bead one or a wool one, have fun. That looked amazing, who thinks they can do that craft this week? If you think you can, get your grown-ups to send in a photo of you or a video of you doing this craft to the Brave Kiss Church Dropbox so we can have a look at your amazing creations next week. We have a brand new devotional for you on the Breathe New Life Church website underneath the Breathe Kids Church section. If you want to be involved and do those, go and find it. It's all about David and Jonathan. Thank you all so much for joining us for Breathe Kids Church this morning. We have loved learning about the friendship between David and Jonathan and we are challenged to go and be a friend like Jonathan this week. Remember, if you want to be in the Breathe Kiss Church video, get your grown-ups to send in a photo of you doing the craft, a video of you doing the challenge and the memory verse. We can't wait to see you next week. Have the best week, everybody. We hope you are staying safe and having a great time back at school and we will see you all soon. Bye.